video starts with mail. The best thing on this planet. What do I have in the box? In the box. In the box. In the box. I have. Oh my god. It's a network adapter. I have two of them. Hey. Um, this is an Intel SIR adapter, an X520 DA2. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Focus. There we go. DA2. Um, 10 gigabit SFP plus. PCIe 8x and um, yeah and these are going in my virtualization server uh, so the Sun Oracle system and my free NAS box so I can link them at Technic G now the people who watch my other videos will well specifically the June server update I guess is that the, yeah uh, you will have noticed that I mentioned that I have fiber channel cards in there. Uh, two, again, dual port, four gigabit uh, per second. And you're most probably thinking, if you've got fiber channel connected in the two systems, why do you want 10 gig E? You know, um, and even more valid the point when I say I don't really think the file system, not the file system, the disk system anyway, of the free NAS box is capable of going over uh, what 4 gigabit can supply, which is 500 megabytes a second. 125 per gig, 400, yeah, 500 gig megabytes a second. I don't think it can, I think it tops out somewhere around 400. So why, why 10 gig E, or in this case, direct attach? Um, fiber channel requires fiber channel targets. On free NAS, that means you've got two ways of doing it. You can either designate a whole device over to it. So say you're using a RAID card and you've got disks on it, fine. You can designate the RAID device over, or you can do it via a file. Uh, in this case, I'm using a one terabyte file. Okay, um, what's the problem with that? Well. What happens if I decide that one terabyte's not enough? I've got to go and re-expand, like delete the disks, well, not delete, create a new one, copy it all over. But at the same time, I don't want to dump a terabyte if I'm not going to use a terabyte. So, go back to standard networking and use NF, yeah, NFS shares instead because they work perfectly fine. And it's currently what I'm also doing, uh, although there's the fiber channel, there is actually a one gig uh, connection via NFS. I hope I'm saying that right. Is it NFS? Yeah, NFS, it's gotta be. If I'm not, I'm just gonna go jump off a bridge because apparently I don't even remember what I'm doing. So yeah, everything should hopefully be shutting down. And uh, yeah. Woo. I totally forgot to look at the uptime. Bollocks. The um, Proxmox is nowhere near as impressive because I recently rebooted it after an update. Oh, better shut this down. This is the problem with having large monsters. No, shut down. Do -do -do -do. So, already got everything powered down and I've got the Oracle drawn out. Because this is a half height, I've had to take the bracket off. I still need to work on like jerry rigging or well, I can easily cut the uh, high profile adapters down, but I just haven't got round to it. So, yeah, this can just pretty much go in here. This is a bit tricky to do one hand. He says, Can he do it? Can he do it one hand? Can he do it? Yes, you can. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to jerry rig something with a zip tie just to hold it up a bit, just so it doesn't wreck everything. It's not the best jerry rig, but it's not supposed to be permanent, he says. Uh, at least it'll hold and stop the card from being moved as I pull or push and pull cables out of it. Right, so lid back on, get this re-hooked up, and then onto the free NAS box. What's this? Your free NAS box already has a 10G gigabit Ethernet 10G. Oh god. 
can't even say words, 10 gigabit network card in it. Why, why have you got another one? Well, as you saw most probably in the June server update, I removed one from my, God, Whew, that didn't sound healthy. I removed one of these from my Oracle system. Uh, these are QLogic ones slash NetZen N3031s. Um, yeah, not 100% compatible with Linux, not 100% compatible with FreeBSD, well, 0% compatible with FreeBSD. So, no FreeNAS support whatsoever. Oh well. So, hence why I've got these ones instead. And it was as simple as that. Time to get this back in the rack all plugged up and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will work. Woo. Now, hopefully, if all goes according to plan, oh God, eh, lots of it. <laughs> that should theoretically be it. You know, that does not look straight at all. There we go. Ooh. Power? Yeah. Oh, why is this giving me a warning light? Rear power supply. Cable, 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 cable. Uh, there it is. Bingo. Uh, oh, there we go, it's cleared. Awesome. And off we go. Wow. There we go. Now just to wait for all this to boot. Hopefully. Start. This is the FreeNAS uh, system booting. And it just mentioned, it just uh, went through the network interfaces. And the onboard are EM, so EM0 and EM1. The PCI X card is uh, IGB 0, 1, 2, and 3, and it mentioned IX, uh, IX 0, 1, which has got to be the uh, 10 gig card. So it seems to be detecting it. It mentioned that it was running, so hopefully it'll work. Just got to wait for it to finish booting and also the Proxmox one booting as well. Come on. So it's detected them, but weirdly it's saying no carrier on both of the interfaces. Hmm. Good news, configuring it has made it active. 10 gigabit to an axial cable. Nice. Now just to do the same on the Proxmox. So now that we're back uh, at my desktop, I uh, haven't used the small monitor so I can actually record this shit and so you can actually read it. So on the left I have my virtualizer. Uh, so this is Proxmo uh, bleh, Proxmox, um, which is running uh, 4.2.61 PVE. Uh, and then that's just free NAS, which is like 9.1. Uh, 9 if you're wondering what those lines were, if they are appearing on the actual recording, uh, it's when steam pops up. For some reason, it produces a line. Uh, only on OBS, though. Don't worry. So yeah, uh, that's the Proxmox machine. Uh, from here, we can do LSPCI and uh, you know get a list of everything that's connected. And so around here, we have the Ethernet controllers. So uh, the four gigabit on board are Intel eight two five seven sixes. Uh, and then here's our Ethernet controller for the external one. So Intel Corporation 82599ES 10 gigabit SFI slash SFP plus network uh, on PCIe Express 13. That's not important, but if you were a hardware pass throughing, that would be important. So I believe that these have bound if we do if config TAC8. I've already configured it, I've already got it working, but uh, four and five in this case are the port zero and port one or port A and B 
uh, unlike on FreeNAS where it's actually given them different names on Proxmox, everything goes under e ETH for some reason. I really should look into changing that. So what I've done is, yeah, I'll go through what I've done on this one in a second. So on this one, as you can see, we have our list of interfaces. We have IGB zero and one. These are the two gigabit that are on the board. There's EM zero, one, two, and three. Those are the four on the PCI X card. And then IX zero and IX one port A and B of the 10 gig card. As you can see, port they are connected via a 10 gig base twin axial cable, which is does the job, so why not? And what I've done is I configured these under the private network of 172.16.10.1 uh, as the network uh, with a mask of slash 30. Um, so 255.255.255.248. So these are the only two uh, devices that can be on that network, so they know they're going to be communicating with each other. So the FreeNAS box has the dot one, uh, and the Proxmox machine has the dot two. Um, the reason they're on one seven two one six twenty is because the existing uh, NFS shares that go over the storage network, as it is, uh, runs one seven two one six dot ten, and then the main network runs one seven two one six dot zero. So yeah, um, that's what they're showing up as under here uh, in our actual web browser. So this is Proxmox. Uh, to configure something under here, you just go into your network tab under your machine and just click on create Linux bridge and set it up like any other uh, device, which is pretty cool. Uh, it will ask you to reboot, but like any other Linux box, you can just do a service networking restart and it should bring everything into life. Uh, if it doesn't, you will need to reboot, but it will also, the changes won't say that they've been made until you actually reboot. That's the one downside of Proxmox, is the interface isn't quite aware of what the machine has done underneath, behind its back. It presumes everything's been done through the interface. Um, and then on the FreeNAS box, similar affair under the interfaces tab. Uh, I've been logged out. Don't know why uh, I can't change the, pass the root password on this system anymore for some reason. So anyway, add interface. Uh, we'd select it. In this case, it was IX0. I gave it the name of 10 GB Link0. Uh, the IP address. Um, Oh no, it's a slash 29 network. Is it slash 29 or slash? No, slash 30. Yeah, slash 30. Grr, I can't remember. Do, 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 do. Yeah, slash 30. Whoopsie. No. Huh. Oh. It's supposed to be a slash 30, but I. <laughs> oh well. Never mind. Actually, that is really interesting. Yeah, this one is running on a slash 30, and yet this one thinks it's running on a slash 29, but they're still able to ping and communicate. Oh well, never mind. I'll change that and fix that in a second. So, actually I'll do it now, why not? Uh, so slash 52, isn't it? At least it should be. Yeah, 252. Okay, there we go. It's seeing it'll say that I've made the changes and I need to restart. So anyway, yeah. Ooh, actually, if I just minimize that, bleh, there we go. Uh, ping 172.16.20.1. You'll see we get a ping. Uh, stays around 0 0.6 of a, 0 0.6 of a millisecond. Uh, varies around a bit. So yeah, uh, I'll report back once I've had a play around and uh, hopefully have some good news. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe and like if you want to see more stupid stuff with hardware. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you.